We left off having tested derailleur performance with various different batteries, and then most recently I revived the project by designing and building what I call the Arctic Fox battery protection and fuel gauge board. It's called that because it has a cute picture of a silk-screened Arctic Fox, in case you weren't aware. I got to the point of looking at writing software, but unfortunately I kind of got sidetracked by this smart battery specification or smart battery system, which meant basically we should have had interoperable multi-cell charging since 1998, but turns out no one cared. I should probably get to writing software pretty soon because, well, as we all know, a software project can go on ad infinitum. They, they don't ever have to end. You can keep building on it forever. So instead of starting that right now, I'm going to do the circuit board to actually get some hardware going on this. And lucky for me, I, I think I alluded to this before, I already did. I've completely designed the whole thing. So we're done or we're not done because I basically looked at it and I hated what I did. So what we probably should do is learn from all those mistakes. So I'm going to go back with wild abandon and no regard for my own previous self feelings and basically mock everything I ever did. So let's get to that. So this is what I call the CX project of a few years ago. And generally um, this works, but uh, honestly, uh, I'm not a big fan of it. There's there's a lot of mistakes. Before I get to that, architecturally, NRF52 module here, you've got your, your crystals and stuff here. This is a spot for a 2 by 2 millimeter accelerometer. Didn't get installed. Didn't really have the skill set or the, the tech to really do such small footprints back then. This here is the, the regulator, and we're now stepping down a much bigger voltage to around 3 volts. So these are... A little more specialty. Big electrolytic cap, motor driver with its current sense resistor, and a FET that obviously looks like it's installed incorrectly because it was designed incorrectly. This is a connector. That connector matches up with one out of an actual power unit. Um, and I happen to have a actual uh, EPS motor spare, sort of spare. Remove this from my damaged derailleur because I had a chain failure that caused me to well, I'll destroy a lot of my bike. So there's nothing really wrong with this design per se, but uh, there are aspects that don't really like it. Like, namely, uh, this accelerometer, part of the board manufacturing, but placement's not great. I obviously connected wires directly to the module instead of uh, proper debug pins. This FET is upside down because the footprint is wrong. And this electrolytic cap is, well, frankly, way too tall to be packaged like that. Uh, test points. This is obviously what I was using to program, which is not great. And um, it's hard to tell, but you can sort of see the power trace, honestly, is a, is a bit small. So I'd like, and the battery connections are on the back now. So now if you were to compare that to the battery protection circuit, the layout is a lot more sensible. Um, I'm using smaller components because I can now large current sense resistor to handle uh, the power. We might not actually need that big a current sense resistor here, but yeah, it could help. Uh, mixed feelings on the connector. Um, I mean, this is great for me because I have one of those cables, but long term, um, these derailleurs are going to need to be snipped in order to be soldered. Next is components, and not a lot is going to change from the original design. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a perfectly serviceable design. Maybe some of the specifics will. First up is the microcontroller, and I mean, that's pretty simple. Uh, I need, I'm going to need at least Bluetooth or some sort of RF, so a system on a chip. Uh, I probably want AMP plus shifting compatibility so that I know what gear I'm in for most cycle computers and don't have to do proprietary stupidness because there is no Bluetooth one and everyone else went proprietary. So it's going to be a Nordic chip and I'm used to the Nordic 52 series um, and most commonly 52832. And we're just going to use a module with built-in antenna and pre-certification. I've got lots of these already uh, for various different projects over the years. I have really, really small ones, uh, but I don't really want to use those because they were really hard to get during the last couple of years and they're starting coming back in stock, but a lot of people are grabbing reels and reels and reels of these uh, very quickly. So who knows if they're out of stock again, it'll be another two years before we can 
get them and I, and I just have a design that either has to get redesigned or wait. So next up is accelerometers. We are only using it for wake up, so it really doesn't matter. We don't have to have really great specifications. But interestingly, everyone kind of has cloned the uh, uh, ST Micros um, LIS series, LIS2 series, I believe. And they're almost footprint and code compatible now at this point, just a few little changes here and there, unless you're doing something exotic, especially with FIFOs or buffers and stuff. But basically we're just using it to generate, oh, some motion happened, wake up the derailleur system and check to see if there's a, a connection. Pretty simple stuff. Probably not gonna talk um, a lot about the Hall Effect FET. It's just a FET. I got the footprint wrong before and uh, had pins flipped, so beginner rookie mistake um yeah just just don't do that i'll find something i, I have a few uh much smaller ones the high efficiency stuff but uh, it's not that important we just need to be able to switch on and off so that they don't pull like 10 or 15 milliamps of current constantly um, because we only need them on for a few milliseconds uh maybe 50 or 100 times a second Surprisingly, the regulator is one of the more uh, annoying things, I will say. So during the last few years, parts went out of stock, new parts were created to have lower costs and easier to build and reduced pin counts for easier to build. It got quite annoying because unless you go old school with like the big linear regulators or things that are designed to kind of fit in those footprints, like you're really stuck when you're talking power efficiency you need dc to dc which means a buck uh, and we need a higher voltage supporting buck so that knocks out something like two-thirds of every company's um, potential inventory most of them are trying to reg down a single cell lithium battery to three and a half volts or you're making a laptop and you need to reg down you know 12 volts all the way down to like 0.9 or 1.2, but with a lot of current behind it. So uh, you have less options, but there are some decent options out there. And hopefully things are a bit better now. It looks like there is a part that I like and is uh, decent stock availability. So that's pretty good. So the last thing to talk about, or the last thing to choose is actually the motor driver. And that's probably the most important thing because you basically have uh, some logic circuits and our charge pump to power the gates of the FETs. A lot of the times the higher efficiency stuff uses internally in FETs, so they have to be pumped to get the voltage to open them with, uh, so that they're fully saturated and they, they have very low, um, what's called RDS on, resistance DS, uh, drain source on. So. I kind of went down a rabbit hole on this and started to going to higher and higher and higher current things. And then the higher current ones are physically bigger. So you try and look for smaller ones, but they have configuration pins and stuff. And then I realized I actually don't really remember how much current this motor can actually draw. Like your stall current is really the most important thing here is when the motor stalled, that's the maximum current. It's just resistive heating at that point. So need to take a little sidetrack to go figure that out. Measuring uh, the coil resistance, you get 3.9, rotate a little, 4.8, 4.7, 9, 4.5, 4.6. So we know that the coil resistance is kind of around 4.5 ohms, but we can double check that by testing it on the power supply. So we'll in remove these leads, connect some others and uh, power it at a couple of different voltages. So I'm actually going to, I only have three amps on this. Uh, I'm gonna set it to about three volts. And realistically, the three amp max setting is probably fine because I want it stalled. And I'm gonna let it rotate a little bit and, and then stall it and then rotate it a little bit and then stall it. So, and you can see uh, that the motor's running and it's while in free run it's about 0.2 amps at three volts full stop 0 0.6 0 0.67 0 0.65 0 0.75 
0.72. So that's one of those instances where we're in the right or wrong coil spot. So you can see we had a 0.58. And let's just, just for proportionality's sake, go up to 6. And when I stop it, 1.4, 1.3, 1.8. Point two, one point two, one point two, three. So this is actually kind of hard on the motor, and I can, I can actually feel it getting warm now. We have a peak of two point eight amps at twelve volts, but a little bit more, so closer to three amps potentially. Um, and there's some obviously some losses in the the wires here because they're a bit longer than they need to be. So we need to take that into account for our performance. So now that we figured that out, uh, basically all I've chosen is the successor to the one that I had previously used, but it ditches that resistor. Now, it may be a shunt resistor internal to it, or it might just be some current mirroring or something like that to, uh, through an op amp. But either way, it simplifies th the design even further, basically. So that's, that's kind of good. So with that, I guess I should be designing the circuit board. No, I need to figure out where the circuit board goes, and that's going to constrain things. Uh, a lot of people think this idea of you know the sticky notes on a board, like used in software development, which has several different names, it doesn't necessarily work for hardware. In fact, what you actually kind of find is that old school waterfall method of of task A begets task B begets task C. Um, and that you can't do task C unless A and B is complete. Like following that waterfall down in a, a standard uh, Gantt sheet planning chart, like that's how most hardware has to go. The difference is we kind of want to have the, all this flexibility of, of just do this and then do this and do this. No, you do actually have to follow a bit of process. And the process here is we need to figure out our enclosure to figure out where our PCB is going. Or you can do it the wrong way, uh, in, at least in my opinion. And lots of companies do this of, design the circuit board and then try and put fit an enclosure around it. I like my way better because it usually means there's less loops in order to get it right. Because what you're going to find is, you know, on that Gantt chart of A through Z, somewhere around K, you'll figure out, you know, if we would uh, just go back and change B or C to these things that we now know about, boy, that would make our lives sure easy. That's kind of where I, I'm going is that I want to constrain what I have in terms of space to work with and then design my circuit board to fit that approximately. And then you go back and you refine things back and forth a little. It works out pretty well. Um, one of the things, one of the things you'll actually see in the next video is that as my skills improved now on how small I believe I can make things, it gives a lot more flexibility to being able to not feel as constrained by those housing problems, but they're still there. And we'll get to that eventually. Uh, it was going to be too long to try and merge these into one. I don't really want to make a 25 to 30 minute video anymore. So that'll have to wait till next time. Uh, maybe I'll sh post that one a little earlier than I expect, but we'll see. Also got some other um, weird and wonderful things uh, planned and in progress, but a lot of it requires me to write a whole bunch of things like code and Python scripts in order to make it work. And those are only part way there and then I have to shoot them. So um, hopefully some more cool stuff coming. Hopefully I can keep this up. Uh, I'm but other than that, um, thanks for following along in this design journey. No, it's not everyone's cup of tea, uh, but I think it's interesting to allow people to peek behind the curtains. And with that, hopefully you learn something and take care.